My First Bible presents The Brothers, Jacob and Esau This is Isaac, Hello. the son that Abraham had. He married Rebekah, and they were very happy. But the years passed, and they did not have any children. They waited a long time until Isaac prayed to God, asking him that Rebekah would have a baby. And before long, God answered Isaac's prayer. Huh? Ah, positive pregnancy test? Oh. Uh-huh. I'm going to be a dad! <laughs> but not in the way they expected. In Rebecca's womb, there was not one, but two babies. Twins. The twins grew. Often, Rebecca could feel the little feet pushing. One night, Rebecca woke up suddenly. The babies had been kicking and moving a lot. She couldn't stand the pain. And she prayed, Lord, are my babies okay? If it hurts me when they move and kick, it must hurt them too. Why does this happen? And God answered her, The two babies that you carry in your womb someday will be the parents of whole nations. One people will become stronger than the other, and the older child will do what the younger child tells him. Then, the time came when the babies would be born. The eldest, the first to be born, had reddish skin. He had his whole body covered with hair. They called him Esau, which means hairy. A moment later, the younger brother was born. His little hand clung to Esau's foot. Then the parents called him Jacob, which means he clings to the heel. Many years passed and the boys grew up. They are there. Esau was a countryman hey, hey. and became an excellent hunter. Ha ha! while Jacob uh -huh. was a quiet man who preferred to stay in the camp. Mm -hmm. Rebecca uh -huh. loved Jacob very much, but Isaac loved Esau more because he loved to eat what he had hunted. One day, while Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau returned from uh -huh. hunting. Uh -huh. He was very hungry because he hadn't eaten anything all day. My brother, Give me some of that stew, he said to Jacob. He sat on the other side of the fire in front of his brother. He I'm couldn't so wait hungry. for Jacob to serve him the stew. I'm gonna bed. Jacob listened as his brother talked about how hungry he was. And then, he thought of a plan. Jacob knew that Esau had something he wanted. The inheritance he will have to be born first. Since Esau was the eldest, he had the right to receive all of the riches, animals, and servants of his father. He had acquired this right at birth, and Jacob wanted that. Then Jacob made a deal with Esau. If you're really so hungry, Jacob told him, if you are very hungry, then sell me your right to inheritance, and I will give you some of my stew. Esau didn't quite understand what his younger brother was saying. Yes, yes, it's fine. Whatever you say. Give me some stew. I'm starving. First, swear it to me, Jacob said. Then Esau swore it to him. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, and that's how he sold Jacob his firstborn rights. And in this way, Esau belittled his rights as an eldest son. Comment and subscribe below. And share with your friends. My first Bible presents Jacob Steals the Blessing. Jacob became Rebecca's favorite son, 
Hey! She also loved Esau, but only wanted the best for Jacob. When Isaac got old, he could no longer see. Hey. He was totally blind. Hey! Hmm? Isaac! Oh. One day, Isaac said to Esau, My son, since you are the eldest, I want to give you my blessing. But first, go hunting and make me a stew as I like. Then I will give you my blessing. Okay. Rebecca had heard what Isaac had said to Esau. When Esau left, she went to Jacob and said, Hey, hey. Your father is huh? going to give his blessing to Esau. I want that oh. to be only for you. Go and look for two of your best goats. I will prepare them exactly as Isaac likes them. Then, you will bring the stew to your father, and it will be oh. you who receives his blessing, and not your brother. And Jacob said to him, But Esau is hairy, and I am not. If my father touches me, he will realize that I am deceiving him. And this will cause him to curse me instead of blessing me. My son, let that curse fall upon me, his mother replied. Just do what I ask of you. And Jacob did as his okay. mother asked. When the meal was ready, Rebecca stuck goat skin on Jacob to make him feel like Esau's hairy skin. And Jacob entered his father's room. Huh? How did you find food so fast, my son? Asked Isaac. Um, the Lord help me. Hmm? Your voice is like Jacob's. Come here. Come closer, Isaac told him. He touched him and felt the hair of the goat skin. But I feel like Esau, Jacob said. Then Isaac tasted the food Jacob gave him. Ah, Isaac said. Here you have your blessing. The blessing was something very special. Isaac knew that God was listening. He asked God to make his son rich and to make other people, including his brother, serve Jacob. He asked God to bless all who were good to his son and to take care of him from the bad. Amen. When Isaac had finished praying, Jacob came out of the room. Soon after, Esau returned from his hunting trip. He rushed to his father's I'm room, here, huh? and Isaac said to him, Esau, why are you back again? But if this is the first time I've come, huh? Esau told him, Ah, oh, so that must have been Jacob. Esau, your brother stole your blessing. <gasps> Esau couldn't believe that his younger brother had cheated him a second time. The first time, Jacob had taken over his birthright, and now Jacob had stolen his blessing also. My father, don't you have another blessing for me? Bless me too, Esau raised his voice and wept. And Isaac blessed him with little. You shall live and serve your brother, but when you become restless, you will remove his yoke from your neck. Esau was so distressed and furious, so furious that he decided to kill his brother. Rebecca discovered Esau's plan and ran to Jacob and warned him. Jacob, quickly, you will have to go very far. Esau wants to kill you. Go and stay at my brother Laban's house until the anger passes Esau, Rebecca told him. Jacob packed up his things, said goodbye quickly, and then left for the wilderness. When Esau found out Jacob was gone, he knew that it was futile to try to pursue him. So he stayed with his parents and took care of them when they got old. <sighs> Esau didn't have his father's blessing, but he knew it was an honor to take care mm -hmm. of his parents as they aged. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Jacob left where his mother told him to go but he was totally alone in the wilderness. When he arrived at a certain place, he stopped for the night because it was already getting dark and he took a stone and used it as a pillow. And there, he dreamed that there was a huge staircase that went up from the earth to heaven. 
In it, the angels of God went up and down, and at the end of the ladder was God standing. And he said to him, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and your father Isaac. To you and your offspring I will give the land on which you are lying. Your offspring will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. All the people of the earth will be blessed through you. I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to the earth. And I will never abandon you. When Jacob woke up from his sleep, he thought in amazement. Actually, the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. Then he got up from that place. Jacob wanted to do something to mark that special place. So he took the stone he had used as a pillow and poured olive oil on it, dedicating that place to God and then gave a special name to that place. He called it Bethel, which means house of God. Hey! Comment and subscribe below. My first Bible presents Jacob works for Laban. Jacob continued his journey to where his mother Rebekah told him the land where his uncle Laban lived. When he finally arrived, he met some shepherds, and Jacob asked them, Where are you from? We are from Haran, they replied. Do you know Laban? Jacob asked. Of course. Mm -hmm. By the way, there comes his daughter, Rachel. When Jacob saw Rachel, he was pleased yeah. because he knew he arrived to the right place and he told Rachel that he was a nephew of Laban, her father, and that his mother, Rebecca, sent him here. Rachel ran away to tell her father. Laban, hearing the news, my nephew, very happy, went out to receive him and took him home. There, Jacob told him everything that had happened, and Laban said to him, Truly, you are of my own blood. Jacob had already been with Laban for a month, and Laban said to him, Just because you are my nephew, doesn't mean you're going to work for me for free. Tell me what your salary will be. Laban had two daughters. The eldest was called Leah and the youngest, Hi. Rachel. Leah had delicate eyes, while Rachel was a very beautiful woman. Since Jacob had fallen in love with Rachel, he said to his uncle, I offer to work for you for seven years in exchange for Rachel, your youngest daughter. In those days, the man had to pay or work for the father to marry his daughter. Laban answered, it is better that he marry you and not a stranger. I agree. So, Jacob worked seven years to marry Rachel. But as he was very much in love with her, it seemed like a short time. When the seven years passed, Laban made a wedding to celebrate and handed his daughter covered with a veil to Jacob. The next morning, Jacob realized that he had been with Leah and not Rachel. Laban deceived him, and Jacob told him, What have you done to me? Didn't I work for you to marry Rachel? Why have you deceived me? And Laban answered him, it is the custom of our country to marry first the eldest and then the youngest. Therefore, work for seven more years and I will give Rachel uh -huh. to you. And thus did Jacob. He worked seven more years for Rachel. 
he did it humbly and without complaining because he loved Rachel very much. <sighs> Until finally, Laban gave him Rachel to wife, and he loves her very much, although he had to work for Laban for seven more years. My First Bible presents Jacob Escapes from Laban After Jacob had worked 14 years in order to marry the daughters of Laban, God saw that Leah was disparaged because Jacob loved Rachel more. Because of this, God gave sons to Leah. Huh? The firstborn was named Reuben, hey. then Simeon, Levi, and Judah. When Rachel realized that she could not give Jacob a son, she became jealous of her sister. Then Rachel took her servant Bilhah to bear children for her. And like that, she had two sons, Dan and Naphtali. Leah did the same with her maid named Zilpah and conceived Gad and Asher. Oh, oh my God. After some time, Leah became pregnant again and conceived Issachar, then Zebulun, then a daughter who was named Dinah. As time passed, God showed pity for Rachel and allowed her to have a son, who she named Joseph. After some time, Jacob asked Laban to allow him to return to Canaan, the land where his parents lived. However, Laban begged him, No, please stay. Thanks to you, the Lord has blessed me. On top of that, decide your own salary that you would like to earn and I will pay you that much. Tell me, how much do you want me to pay you? You don't have to pay me anything. Huh? If you accept what I am about to propose, I will continue to care for your sheep. In your flock, you will set aside for me all of the sheep and goats that are striped, spotted, or speckled. That will be my salary. The rest of the sheep and goats will be yours. And Laban accepted the offer. <laughs> From that day on, many animals were added to Jacob's flock. Jacob's animals continued to multiply, while Laban's animals were weak and did not grow the same. In this way, Jacob prospered greatly and eventually came to have many herds. He also had many male and female servants, as well as camels and donkeys. The sons of Laban were not very happy with this. Jacob discovered that they were going around saying, Jacob has been taking over everything that belonged to our father and has grown rich at his expense. Jacob also noted that Laban no longer treated him the same. So God told Jacob, Return to the land of your parents, for I will be with you. Jacob knew it was time to return. Jacob told Leah and Rachel everything that had happened, and they responded, We no longer have anything here, not even the inheritance of our father's house. Our father treats us as if we were foreigners. Therefore, do everything that God has ordered you to do. Okay. So, Without saying anything to Laban, together with his wives, his children, and his flocks, he headed for Canaan. After three days, Laban was informed huh? that Jacob had escaped. Blah, 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 Laban blah, blah, gathered blah, blah, blah. his family members and chased him for seven days until he arrived to the mountains of Gilead. That night, God said to Laban, be careful with what you say to Jacob. The following day, Jacob saw that Laban and his men had caught up to him. He was scared and worried because he knew that Laban was not very happy with him. Why did you flee like this without saying anything to me with my daughters and my grandchildren? Laban demanded. 
you didn't give me the chance to say goodbye to them. I would have gladly said goodbye to you. You know I have the power to hurt you. But last night, your father's God spoke to me and told me to be careful with what I say to you. Why did you do that? The truth is that I was very scared because I thought you could take my wives and my children by force. Laban, I have served you for 20 years and I have always been a faithful worker. During this entire time, I have cared for the animals diligently. I never complained about my job, even when I was consumed by the heat during the day or dying of cold at night and I couldn't even sleep. Out of the 20 years I was there, 14 of those I served for your two daughters and six for your livestock. During all that time, you changed my pay many times. However, God was with me. If it hadn't been for God, you probably would have fired me and left me with nothing. But God knows how hard I have worked for you. That is why he spoke to you last night. And Laban responded to him, Jacob, regardless, Everything that you have received has been because of me, my daughters, my grandchildren, and the animals. But it wouldn't be right for me to take them from you. Let's make a peace treaty. And Jacob accepted. Okay. So, both families piled up a heap of stones. This pile of stones, declared Laban, will serve as proof that neither you nor I will cross this line with the intention of hurting one another. The God of Abraham will be our judge. And Jacob swore to it. The following morning, Laban said goodbye to his daughters and grandchildren and returned to his home. And Jacob continued on his path toward the land of his family. Comment and subscribe below. My First Bible presents The Reunion of Jacob and Esau. Jacob and his family continued on their journey. As Jacob started to get closer to his home, he started to feel more and more nervous because of Esau. He thought to himself, could Esau still be angry with me? Because of this, Jacob sent a message to his brother Esau, stating that he was in the land of Edom. The message said, my lord Esau, all this time, I have been living in Laban's home, and now I have many flocks, many cows, donkeys, sheep, and servants. I'm sending you this message with the hope that you will receive me kindly. With love, your serf and brother, Jacob. After sending the message, the messenger returned and informed Jacob. I found your brother Esau, and he says he's on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. <gasps> Would you attack him? Jacob was terrified by the news. He had the idea to separate his people into two groups. He also divided up the flocks and his possessions. That way, if Esau finds one of the groups, maybe the other group will be able to escape. Yeah. So Jacob prayed, O God of my grandfather Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you told me, return to the land of my parents. You told me you would be with me. I am begging you to save me from the hands of my brother Esau. I am scared that he will come to attack me my wives and my children. But you promised me that you would treat me with kindness and that my descendants would multiply like the dust on the earth, impossible to count. Blah, 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 and so Jacob blah, blah, stayed the night in that same place. Later, Jacob sent a message and many animals as gifts to Esau. He gave instructions to his messenger to tell Esau, your serf, Jacob, is following behind us. Okay. Jacob thought, 
I will attempt to calm him down by sending gifts before I see him in person. Hopefully then, he will receive me with kindness. On the night before meeting with Esau, Jacob sent his family and all his belongings to cross a river called the Javik, but he stayed behind. While Jacob was on foot and alone beneath the stars, worried and praying, a man huh? appeared out of the desert. Who are you? A thief? Whoever he was, the man was very strong and fought with Jacob. Throughout the entire night, the men fought. They had the same strength. Jacob realized that this was not a man, and he thought to himself, could he be an angel, or could it be God, himself in person? When the stranger saw that no one would win the fight, he hit Jacob in the hip and dislocated a bone. Jacob felt a great deal of pain. And the stranger said to him, let me go, for the sun will be rising soon. I will not let you leave unless you bless me, Jacob said. What is your name? asked the stranger. Jacob. No, you are no longer Jacob. Your new name is Israel, because you have fought with God and with men, and you have won. Please, tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? responded the man. He then blessed Jacob right there, and he left. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God, because he said, I have seen God face to face, and yet I am still alive. He then limped away. The next day, Jacob looked up and saw Esau approaching with an army. Jacob quickly divided up his family, sending the children with their mothers. He then placed himself in front of them and went forward. As he approached his brother, Jacob bowed to the ground, then kept walking and bowed again. He did this seven times until he was very close to Esau. Finally, when they were close to each other, Esau ran towards him and hugged him as they both began to cry. My brother. Jacob felt a great sense of relief. Who are these people who have come with you? asked Esau. This is the family that God has given me. And what about all those flocks and herds you gave me? Esau asked again. They are a gift, my lord, to ensure your friendship, answered Jacob. My brother, I have more than enough, said Esau. Save all of that for yourself. No, please keep them, Jacob insisted. Accept the gifts from me to show that you have forgiven me. God has been very generous with me. I have more than I need. Due to Jacob's insisting, Esau finally accepted the gift. Very well, said Esau. Let's keep going. I will travel with you. Thank you, Esau. But we need to travel much slower than all of you, because we have many children and young animals. Okay, Esau responded. But let me send some men with you to protect you. That isn't necessary, responded Jacob. God will protect us, just as he has been protecting us the entire time. And so, Esau returned to the land of Edom. And Jacob and his family arrived to the city of Shechem, in the land of Canaan, Jacob's homeland.